Welcome to lesson 40 in Hydraulics 102 and lesson 9 in the section on hydraulic cylinders. In this lesson we will be learning about hydraulic cylinder forces. Now before I change my slide, what does directly influence the force output of a hydraulic cylinder? Think about that. Now primarily it is the pressure of the work fluid and the area of effect of that pressure, or more precisely, the piston area. Now remember the equation for pressure, it is equal to force over area. So force is going to be pressure times area. That is the theoretical equation for the force that the cylinder outputs. However, we are already used to when we hear the term theoretical, our brain automatically says, okay, but what about the real force? What about the practical force? Well, the force that we get from the work fluid and the area of the piston is not the only force that is going to affect our cylinder. As we see in this diagram right here, there are a couple of different forces acting on this piston. Here we have the counteracting force, Fp, the, the force that comes from the counter pressure on the other side, the fluid that's been left inside the hydraulic cylinder. So we have the counteracting pressure right here, PP. We have the theoretical pressure of the cylinder, which we calculate using the pressure and the area of the piston. Now we also have friction force that is going to oppose the theoretical force. So friction force is going to act between, so let me just write this, so friction force is going to act between the piston and the cylinder casing. We are also going to have inertial force that is produced during the acceleration and deceleration phase. Remember the diagram that we had uh, when we talked about hydraulic cylinder speed, we had the, the, we had the speed, we had the acceleration phase, the first phase, and we had the third phase, which was the deceleration phase. During these two phases, we have inertial forces that occur. Of course, in order to calculate the counteracting force, we have to know the pressure that is on the other side of the piston and that's going to be the pressure on the other side of the piston times the area of the piston minus the area, the cross-sectional area of the piston rod which will give us this area on the back. In the retraction phase the counteracting force is larger because the area in front of the piston is larger. So we just flip the theoretical force is going to push from this side and the counteracting force is going to push from this side. Now if the cylinder is single acting and has a spring for the automatic return, the force from the spring occurs as well. Now the force of friction occurs because of the friction between the piston and the cylinder and between the piston rod and the seals. So we have friction force occurring not only here but also right here. So wherever there's a point of contact we have friction force. So these are the points where the friction occurs. The force of friction is larger when the piston goes from the state of rest into motion. Now when the piston is in even motion force of friction is smaller. So the force of friction is larger when we are starting our hydraulic cylinder. When the cylinder is mounted horizontally, the equation for the friction force is the coefficient of friction times the weight of the moving parts inside of the hydraulic cylinder, which is the standard way of calculating the friction force. Now, what about the force of inertia that we said occurs in the acceleration and deceleration phases of piston motion? So this phase right here and this phase right here. When the piston accelerates, when it's in the, in, in the first phase, the force of inertia is opposite of the theoretical force, okay, remember that. 
and when the piston decelerates, the force of inertia is in the same direction as the theoretical force. Now, if we are in acceleration phase, the force of inertia acts opposite of the theoretical force of the cylinder. If we are in deceleration phase, force of inertia acts in the same direction of the theoretical force of the cylinder. How do we calculate the force of inertia? Well, easy. We just take the mass of all moving parts plus the work fluid, because the work fluid also has its inertia and it also moves inside of the cylinder, times the acceleration or deceleration. And the acceleration or deceleration equation is equal to two times the distance traveled during the acceleration or deceleration phase divided by the time of accelerating or decelerating. Now taking all these forces into account, we can find the working force or the effective real force of the cylinder, which we mark as F2. We have the theoretical force of the cylinder minus the opposing force plus the force of friction plus or minus the force of inertia depending on if we are accelerating or decelerating and we can write all of these force losses as delta F. Now in constant motion, which is the middle part of our speed graph, which actually prevails when we're talking about cylinder movement, there is no inertial force. And in most cases, the counteracting force, Fp, is of a small intensity, so we can neglect it and we can write the real effective force just as theoretical force of the cylinder minus the force of friction that occurs inside of the cylinder. Most of the times we neglect the counteracting force. In these two graphs we can see the relationship between force and speed and force and the achieved pressure difference. As we can see, the force remains the same if we change the speed and we can see that the real force is smaller than the theoretical force of the cylinder for the losses, okay? So these are the force losses that occur. As we change the achieved pressure difference, force obviously rises. Again, here we have the difference between these two forces. And this is it for the lesson on force. Thank you for listening and for staying focused. In the next lesson, we will be covering the hydraulic cylinder effort and the power of the hydraulic cylinder.